Hello and welcome to Philly Philly, my live stream channel. Um, today I'm super excited. First of all, if you've never joined me, um, welcome. This is my weekend cooking stream. I stream uh, one day each weekend. A lot of times it's been on Sundays, but today it's on Saturday because of our plans this weekend. And uh, But thank you for joining and I'm super excited about the recipe today. One of the reasons I started my stream, actually the main reason, was to be able to, you know, really be able to share some recipes that my grandma made that are so important to me and kind of immortalize them for my family and for future generations, for people that uh, are interested in some of the recipes that she created. She was so good um, at cooking and especially baking, and today, I'm actually sharing with you, is in it, and I'll go, I'll talk about this more, but it's actually not her recipe, it's her mom's recipe, but for one of my favorite first pies. I was not a big pie person when I was little growing up. Um, I think the pies I liked most often were lemon meringue, um, and then eventually, because I don't think I had key lime until I was much older, that wasn't really a thing as much when I was little that I remember. But I wasn't a big fruit pie person. Um, I don't know if it was the texture. I have a son, my youngest is not a big fruit pie person. Um, I don't know if it was the texture of the fruit or the crust. To be honest, I wasn't always a fan of all the crusts. Like now I love crusts, but at the time, wasn't a super big fan. And one of the things I loved about uh, this recipe, Hungarian apple pie, is it does use a different crust. And for whatever reason, the flavors of this crust I loved and so um, anyways I just I loved this pie so this is one of the first pies that I remember really really enjoying um, and it's perfect for this season because right now there are so many different kinds of apples that available that are available and I will have to say back in the day when my grandma was making this and my great grandma was making this there weren't quite as many apples uh, you know to be offered. So certainly that's a way that you could put your spin on this recipe is you could decide what apples you would like to add um, into the pie. So, uh, but first a little bit about the recipe. Oh, and also for anyone new, please make sure you like and subscribe and get those notifications so you know when I'm streaming and you know when I upload a video because sometimes I am uploading videos, sometimes they're shorts, sometimes um, they're just a recipe that is just better for a video because it would be you know a half a day if i streamed it so make sure you don't miss a thing and also if you want to get updates follow me on twitter philly philly live where i share food and restaurants in the philly area speaking of philly i don't know if you can tell but i'm wearing my phillies shirt because the phillies are in the playoffs and last night and my apologies to any st louis fans um, but last night they won the first game, the wild card game, and uh, it's one best out of three. And it was we were just grateful. It was the ninth inning. Hubs and I saw it, and it was very exciting, very unexpected. Because ninth inning, you know, you hope that a team can pull through, uh, but you never know. And they did. So it was a super exciting game. We'll be watching tonight. But really thinking about my fills. It's been a while since we have been in the playoffs. So, and I love the team. I just think the team is a great bunch of players. They have a lot of heart and a lot of talent. And uh, and that was very evident last night. So definitely representing my fills today. So uh, the recipe. So the recipe, again, is called Hungarian pie, Hungarian apple pie. And my, I always kind of thought it was my grandma's recipe, but, what I, one thing that's funny is, you know, when the way recipes were shared when I was younger is they were shared mostly through cards, right? And so I actually have three cards. I actually have four. One I wrote myself uh, when I was younger and my handwriting was terrible. Like not, not like elementary young, but I still have my hair. I never really loved my handwriting, but that's a whole nother story. So, um, but I have three and I believe these are all written by my aunt. And what I think is funny is that they're all a little different. Now, the measurements are only a little different in some ways, but I just, I thought this was just really interesting. So just enter my brain for a little bit. I just thought it was interesting that, you know, when you think about people sharing recipes years ago, they were writing it down. 
So I'm not sure if some of them were errors or if it's just approximations or what, but I just, I got a kick out of, of reading each of them and seeing that they were written each a little differently for my aunt. And one of them um, had a different uh, baking temperature, but two had another kind. So I'm going to stick with the one that the two had and just like slight variations. Um, so I just, I don't know, I just find that's interesting. Often we don't have multiple copies of the same recipe, but um, but this time I did and I and I gotta say, I got a little kick. And even some rest, some of the copies gave a little bit more of a, um, some tips just with preparing, you know, and cooking. And of course, by the way, this was not used in this recipe back in the day, but I love, as if anyone have seen me on my streams, you know, I love my KitchenAid, I love my stand mixer, and I'm all about, um, letting some of the devices take advantage and um, kind of help with these creations and they do it better than I would. So, but the thing I wanted to share with you most is when I was reading these recipes, I realized that one of them said, because on, on the old fashioned recipe cards, they would often say from the kitchen of, right? So you that way you could put like, maybe it was from your neighbor, Betty, or maybe it was from your friend, John, right? Um, so this one said that from the kitchen of, and it was my great grandma. And so, and then of course I had a total blank of, well, you know, wait, which one was this? Was this, you know, my grandpa's mom or my grandma's mom? And then reached out to my folks and it's my grandma's mom. So honestly, I love sharing my grandma's recipes and I'm thrilled that today I'm actually sharing my great grandma's recipes. So my grandma's mom. So this has gone back and if I recall, and I'm not an expert by any stretch because we've not done the whole genealogy and everything, but based upon family um, records is that um, my grandma had an Hungarian side. So my great grandma certainly had that Hungarian side. I just don't know exactly when they came over. Maybe I'll tell that in a future stream, but I love that this is from my great grandma. So, but my grandma used to make this um, often. So I hope you enjoy this recipe and uh, I have not made it for a while. I always tell you that. You can see that I just think what's interesting with the streaming is, um, you know, the cooking style. So, you know, I was a mama raising boys, you know how that is. And, and one was picky, one was not. And so my cooking changed during that time, right? There was, I was making things to really, I, I always, I cook from my heart and I really, that's where I show my love. And so, when I cooked, I wanted to make sure and satisfy everyone's needs because I didn't want to have separate meals. And so there's things I didn't cook for a long time because it really wasn't something the whole family enjoyed. So uh, it's really neat now being an empty nester that I can kind of revisit some of these recipes that were near and dear to me um, and make them again. But I am feeling a little anxious because I'm, I'm, I'm a little worried about my technique. So bear with me and know that I am you know, I make mistakes and I can struggle in the kitchen, but you know what I've learned is it's not about the mistakes. It's really about what you do about the mistakes. And that's a, like a life lesson. So, um, you know, real time, you'll see me putting together this Hungarian apple pie and we'll get through it. And at the end, it will be delicious. So I'm, uh, without any further ado, I'm gonna get started. And I do have another camera here that you see that'll help with, um, first of all, some of the mixing and will also help when I'm doing some rolling. So if you are here and you wanna say hello, please um, feel free to say hi in the chat. I always like to know who's joining me during the streams. And if you don't wanna share, totally okay. But also if you're watching this when it's become a video, please let me know what you think of the recipe or ones that you're interested in seeing um, or versions that you like uh, or apple pies that you like. So I always like hearing from uh, my viewers and those that are coming in when I'm streaming. So we are gonna start by getting the crust ready. Um, and because then when I get my apples ready, I'm gonna put the crust in the fridge. I will have you note that one of these cards said refrigerate overnight. So what that tells me is that number one, you could refrigerate overnight, but I wanted to make sure I made this live in the stream. But also that as we know with any crust, it benefits from being cold, right? So, um, so I am going to be putting it in the fridge when we're getting the apples ready. So that'll give it some time to um, to firm up even more. So in our crust, what we're going to be needing, and I'm going to get this off, 
The ingredients that we are gonna be needing for the crust are two cups flour, a half teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of baking powder, a quarter cup sugar, a quarter pound of butter, two egg yolks, and a half cup sour cream, and a teaspoon of vanilla. So um, one of the things I did want to mention about that is I do not have all of these measurements down below. I didn't realize I hadn't gotten that into my, my pre-information before I made the stream. So my apologies for that, but I definitely will get this information to you in the next 24 hours. Um, so if you're watching this later, it probably is already down there, but I just wanted to let anyone know that is watching it in the next day. That is why those measurements aren't there. So my apologies about that, but stay tuned. It'll be there soon. So, um, so one of the first things I'm going to do is just get my flour measure. And by the way, I already cut up my butter. It's a quarter pound of butter. It's a stick of butter. I bought Kerry Gold, which um, comes in a half pound. So I cut that in half and then I cut it into small pieces and I put it in the freezer. When I make a pie crust, I like my uh, butter to be super cold. You've seen that with me when I've made other kinds of crusts because it's going to cut in with using my mixer. It's gonna cut into the flour as we do for pies. So I want it super cold. So I already did that before, before we came in. So, and any of you that know um, with me and my stream that uh, I have, and oh, I'm so bummed. Can I just have a rant a second? So anyone, any of you that have been following me know that my containers for my flour and sugar are terrible because I cannot fit my um, measures in there. And so I can only fit a quarter cup in here. So I got new ones and they haven't arrived yet. And I take that back. They arrived yesterday, but apparently they couldn't be delivered. I don't know. It's just anymore. It just seems like deliveries are hard, are hard. And this is a first world problem. I fully admit it. So I'm going to get my quarter cup measure. I also hadn't worn my, my um, apron in a while. So I was kind of feeling it today with my grandma. Okay. So I'm going to measure two cups flour. You can see we have music today. We finally fixed that at the stream, one, one second, this week, two. And um, so I'm very excited to have some music, especially because it's just me today. So my hubs uh, hopefully will be joining us at the end to taste the final product. Um, but it just, it's nice to have music. I know, I don't know about y'all, but I actually very much like to have music playing um, when I'm cooking. So if I'm cooking later in the day, a nice little glass of wine is also lovely, but we're early, so I only have my water, but I like having the music. I don't know, it just, it calms me. It makes the whole experience more fun and more relaxing. So I have my two cups of flour in there. You can see, and I'm gonna set this aside because I will need this later when I'm rolling it out. So I think I'm just gonna we're just going to put that right there for right now. Okay, we'll keep this with sugar. Okay, so um, let's see here. And we're going to be mixing the first few ingredients. That was what was interesting when I was looking at all of this. So we're going to put the flour, the baking powder, the salt, and sugar in this bowl. So I got my baking powder, and with my baking powder, I need one teaspoon. baking powder and I need a half teaspoon of salt and I need a quarter cup of sugar which is perfect because that's the only measure that fits in my these silly containers so hopefully the next time you see me using sugar or flour I will have my new containers that are going to have a bigger mouth here that way it can fit everything in so a quarter cup of sugar so it's a little bit sweeter dough and then i'm going to take a whisk and i'm just going to whisk these all together before i add the butter that's not going to work there we go so just whisk these together All right, here 
So we just whisked it all together. Um, and by the way, those of you who have not joined me before with any of my grandma's recipes, this is um, a, uh, a pastry board that my grandpa made, um, that my mom used to have, and that I have. So, uh, so this is awesome. Um, in any event, let me see here. So we've got our two cups flour, half teaspoon salt, one teaspoon baking powder, quarter cup sugar. We mixed it here. Now we're gonna put this under the mixer. Okay, there we go. Actually, let me get the butter in there first. So I have my butter in the freezer. This is a quarter pound of butter, which is like one stick, if, you, if yours are in sticks. In. I kept there getting cold. All right? And then we are going to get it ready on the mixer. Again, you could use um, a pastry cutter at this point. You could use a pastry cutter. You could use um, you know, two knives. I know there's a couple different, you can use your, your hands. Some people like to make their dough um, with their hands, but I'm going to use this because this works well for me. And um, it'll the noise will come up in the microphone at the beginning, but then it will eventually uh, it'll kind of calm down a little bit. Okay. So while my mixer is doing that, and let me see, actually, get this going. Hey, DS. Yes, I I got like two inches off. Wow, that's a, I'm impressed you noticed that, by the way. Welcome to the stream. Thanks for joining. Let's see. Okay. All right, so I'm going to move this there so you can kind of see what's going on with the mixer. So when you put the mixer with that attachment on low and you're getting, you're making a pie or a crust, what it's doing is it's just incorporating that butter in. But what's nice about not using your fingers is as you know, with a flaky crust, you want um, that butter to stay cold and break up. And if you use your fingers, it does warm it. So, um, and it really works well to kind of make it look a little bit like oatmeal uh, or wet sand uh, with a little bit of patience. So, um, and thank you for noticing the apron DS. Yes, yeah, so this apron my niece gave me, and I haven't worn it. I used, when she first gave it to me, I wore it all the time, but then I found certain times uh, it just, it was, like it just didn't work for whatever recipe I was doing, but I do like wearing an apron, especially when I'm rolling out dough, because a lot of times you get the flour, you know, tossed on you. So aprons definitely have a purpose for sure. So, um, but while this is working on breaking up the butter, we're gonna get our eggs ready and our mixture that's gonna be added to our dough once this is all ready. And basically that's going to be two egg yolks, a half cup sour cream, and a teaspoon of vanilla. So I'm gonna get my egg yolks ready. And I will say that with my, in fact, I'm gonna put this here just in case. We'll use this when we do the apples. Okay, and I will say with the eggs, save your whites because the white you're going to be brushing along the top of the crust before it goes in the oven. So we're gonna separate the eggs right now. And you can use an egg separator or what I like to do is just use the shell. So hopefully I will be able to do that well. Some people use their hand, I don't know. I, I think the shell works well. You just gotta have a little patience. And then I'm gonna put my yolks in here. So see you've got your little your little yolk. Let's see if this one cooperates. And these are eggs from our local market, which are from a farm, from a nearby farm. That's why they're so gorgeous, why the yolks are so they're almost they're not almost, they're like they're like an orange yellow. They're gorgeous. I'm just separating my eggs. Come on, yolk. Okay, well that'll be fine. 
and throw these away. So how do you all like to separate your eggs? That's how I do it, but I'm not sure what, what you guys do. I just use the shell. So I'm gonna set this aside for, this, these are the whites that I'm gonna set aside later to, to brush on top of the crust on the, before it goes in the oven. Set that aside. I'm just gonna mix these up. And to my egg, I'm actually going to be adding um, the teaspoon of vanilla so that can get in there. I already have my half cup of sour cream measured out. I'm looking, ooh, oh my gosh. You know, if you have a stand mixer and you're not using it for this purpose, it is, let's see, uh-oh, shouldn't have done that, but don't do that. That was a mistake. It, it is so easy. Do you see how that texture changed? You're looking, look in the camera down below. It looks just like wet sand now. And so that butter has been incorporated. I love it, I love it. Okay, so I'm just gonna add my vanilla. You don't have to mix these all together, but I'm just going to add it to this, to my egg yolk, teaspoon of vanilla. And of course I have that vanilla paste, so I'm going to use the vanilla paste, but you can use vanilla however, however you have it. This is a paste I've talked about that I got on Amazon actually, and I love it. It has just a super, super fresh taste and um, you get the little flecks of vanilla, which I love seeing in the cooking. So I'm giving it a little stir. You don't have to do that. And then I'm just gonna be adding it to my flour here. And I'm gonna add my sour cream. Half cup. There we go. All right. Get this some water in. So today, Hubs and I are going to dog sit our, um, our grand pups. How exciting is that? Let me get this going. So I added all my, the rest of my ingredients and then all we're gonna do is, um, is, oh, let me think. Let me just, let me just read a second. Let me stay. See, I tried to do too many things at once and I haven't made this in a while. I just wanna make sure I don't miss anything. Yep. We're just gonna mix this well, and then we're gonna divide the dough in half. So we get it going. There we go, let me get a spatula, and I'll tell you about the dog sitting. And by the way, Diaz, um, oh, yes, hi, BB. Is, this the, is it the same BB as Twitter? That's a great question, Diaz. Oh, and DS, I love, I love that I have my grandma's recipes. I, it's, it is, honestly, as I said earlier, this is why I started streaming. Because I wanted a way to make sure that these recipes stayed around, and also that there was a way for these recipes to be accessed by my kids. Okay, I'm going to give this a quick spin up. Get it all incorporated. And then stop. I really didn't want these recipes lost. And, you know, I mean, obviously you, you, can't, you can't force family to continue cooking this way, but I just wanted them saved somehow. And I thought, you know, with the video and streaming these, they would be able to see start to finish how the recipe, even with errors, is conducted. And so I just thought it'd be a great tribute to my grandma um, and great for the family. I don't know, I just, I thought it was kind of a cool idea. And at the very least, you know, hopefully these recipes get used by other people and enjoyed, which is the most important part. Like food is meant to be enjoyed. All right, so let me show you. You can see how that looks. So see there, we have a dough. And all I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna divide that dough into two. So I'm just gonna right over here, put it together. And take off my rings. There we go. Here's the apples that we'll be using later, or soon actually. And look, see that that dough? It just comes out. Super easy. 
Okay, so I'm just gonna cut this dough in half. Let it set up a little bit. Okay, get my pastry cutter. Thank you, DS. And BB, thank you for joining the, the stream. And I gotta say, DS, you know who has been missing you is Shelby. She is sleeping right now, but you know, she might poke her nose in here. So I'm just gonna divide this in half. Just eyeball it. And then I'm just gonna put both of these on a plate and put it in the fridge. To chill. We need our dough to chill out. Throw that in the fridge. Now I will say, if um, you were going to do this in the fridge overnight, wrap it. But since it's not going to be a long time, I just I just wanted to get it thrown in and get it chilled a little bit. So our dough is in the fridge, which means now we can prepare our apples. Yes, the famous cameo. She has missed you. She has missed you. She comes out here every once in a while. I like, where's, where's DS? Where's my friend? If truth be told, right now she's dreaming because, you know, the dogs, their paws are going. So she's running in a field somewhere. So it's a pretty good dream for a dog. All right, so now we're going to prepare our apples. Before I do that, though, one of the techniques that's used in this recipe is um, you sprinkle some sugar and flour and then you put some apples or half the apples you sprinkle a little more sugar and flour and then you put the rest of the apples so i'm going to first just get that mixture set together so it's all ready to go once our apples are ready and i'm also going to make sure my oven is set at the right temperature we're going to be cooking this at 400 one of the recipes showed 375 and the other two recipe cards said 400. So I'm going with 400. I'm going to be using a convection oven. Um, I really like using my convection for baking. So I'm going to reduce the 400 to 375 convection bake. If you're baking in a regular oven, just use 400, but make sure your um, rack is set in the middle. So I'm going to get that ready. One second. There we go. Okay. All right. So the mixture that we're going to be um, alternating with our apples, again, is flour and sugar. And I just want to find the measurements from that. Sometimes they're right in the middle of it. So, and I remember there are a couple of these had different measurements. So I think the one I was going to stick with and they're... Um, and small writing. Let me find it. Let me find it. I apologize. Let me just. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Yes, one cup sugar and two tablespoons flour. So let me get our sugar back out. One cup sugar. Oh, good question. So, um, so I, the market. Uh, DS was asking about what kind of apples these are. So I honestly wasn't sure what I was going to have the choice of. I know we have a lot more apples this se right now. This is the season that you get a lot more apples at your stores. Um, the, the market that I go to in the city river wards that I, if you're on Twitter with me, you see me talk about, um, they had a huge variety. And I chose Jonathan because on the recipe card, uh, they mentioned, uh, my aunt mentioned, um, who wrote the recipe down of my grandma's, my, actually my great-grandma's, um, she mentioned Jonathan or Macintosh. And so um, they had Jonathan. So I, I, I feel like there's so many different kind of apples you can use. I know for me in pies, a lot of times I use Granny Smith, but I kind of wanted to harken back to what was maybe more often used. So I, so we had Jonathan, so I'm using Jonathan. And I can't say that I've ever cooked with Jonathan apples. So I'm really excited about it. And you know what, before I do the sugar, I'm realizing I do want to rinse these because I didn't rinse these yet. These came from a local farm. And I just want to give them 
I rinse and let them dry out a little bit before, before I peel them and slice them. I'm also gonna be doing that the way um, was suggested in the recipe, which is using a grater, uh, but like using a box grater. Now I'm not grating the apples, but I'm slicing them on that slice part of the grater. Uh, I So funny story, I do not have a mandolin and I've been, I don't know, I've been on the fence as to whether to get a mandolin or not. I know that a mandolin would be so effective and efficient with any of my slicing needs but I have a friend who hurt herself on her mandolin. So it's made me a little bit nervous um, because I realized that you do have to be super careful and she did heal from it, but that's kind of made me nervous and weak me out a little bit. So I've not gotten a mandolin yet. So we're gonna add our, right now we're gonna do our, our, uh, cup, of our cup of sugar and two tablespoons of flour. So yeah, so these are Jonathan's, these apple, these apples, I should say. And the recipes ranged from four to six. So I went with six, so I made sure I had um, plenty. So that's a quarter cup, that was half, now it's three quarter cup. And now we have a cup, cup of sugar. But like I said, I think there's so many different apples that are available. And also depending on where we are, we might not have all the different um, kinds available. So you kind of gotta see what's by you um, and what you can use. And now two tablespoons of, my tablespoon measure, two tablespoons of flour. So DS, do you like making apple pie? Have you made apple pie? And same goes uh, for you, BB, if you are joining and want to, um, I don't know if you've made apple pie or what your favorite kind of apple pie is. So one tablespoon, two tablespoons. And if you're joining on the um, Later on the video, I would love to know what kind of apple pies you like. So I'm just gonna use my whisk and kind of work this flour into the sugar so it's incorporated. You could use a fork, but my whisk was handy because I used it at the beginning when I incorporated the baking powder, salt, sugar into the original flour. And this just, I don't know, whisks are really meant to do this kind of job. They're meant to make whipped cream and um, fluffy eggs, but they're also meant, and meringue, but they're also meant to just incorporate. They take, they make the work so much easier, to be honest. Oh, it is. This is the best season for apple pie. So you like making all kinds of apple pies. I love a good crumb top also. Um, like I said, I didn't really like pies when I was younger. So this was the first uh, true fruit pie that I liked. But then as I got, um, as I got older, I, I really like the crumb topping because the crumb is like what you might find on, you know, different breakfast cakes, uh, you know, crumb cakes. Um, and I just, I loved that. So having that on a pie, like, made it all the better. So in preparing my apples, I'm going to grab my box grater. And on a box grater, you've got so many different, you know, options from like a regular shred. This is good for to making um, Parmesan cheese, making it very fine. And then you just have a regular fine, finer shred than this one, but then you always have a slicing option. So that's what I'm gonna use. I have no idea how it's gonna go. That's okay, right? And I'm actually just gonna use this because it's already had the pie crust in there. Might as well just throw the apples in there too. I'm gonna dry them. Um, and the first thing I'm gonna do is get these peeled. So let me do that first. And hmm, I'm just thinking the best way to do that, I don't need this yet because I need to peel those, those guys. I think, I know what I'll do. I'm just gonna bring my trash can over here. I need to get the peels in. All righty. So just do a little peeling. I will have to say, peeling isn't, okay, this is not, my peeler is not working, I'm gonna do it this way. I'm just gonna do it this way. Okay, so I'm not leaning over. Um, peeling is one of my least favorite things to do in the kitchen, 
which is probably, if I'm being honest, why a lot of times I don't make more mashed potatoes. Um, if I make a mashed, a mashed potato, I'm gonna make a smashed potato with red potatoes or those thin skinned white ones. Um, I hate peeling. So I, so many things with cooking I find relaxing. Peeling is not one of them. What is the thing that you dislike most when you're cooking? Like the task, the necessary task that you gotta do, but is just a pain in the butt. I'm also gonna put some, um, I'm gonna get some acidulated water. Yeah, I'm not gonna use that. I'm gonna get another bowl. Apples turn brown after you, apples turn brown after you peel them. So I'm gonna get some acidulated water going here, which basically just means lemon water so that you dip them in there and they don't continue to turn brown. I mean, a little brown is just gonna happen, but that's what I'm gonna do. So let me get this going. I got a lemon, I'm gonna squirt some of the lemon here. The dishes, yeah. So I will have to, I have to um, brag, super lucky in this household because hubs, I make the mess and he cleans it up. So I'm super spoiled. I, I love that. And from early on, uh, you know, I'm just gonna actually leave that lemon in there just to let it continue to help sway the browning. Um, from early on, because he knew I loved to cook, he's like, you cook it, I'll clean it up. Now I will tell you, there's certain times that he's, He's always good. I mean, he's so good about cleaning up my messes, but he certainly, um, you know, with some of the things you make, you're like, oh dear, that's going to make such a mess. So, I mean, he's normal, right? Like, he he does it because he's a helpful guy and wants to um, pitch in, so to speak. But, you know, certainly the big, big messes, while they taste, it can taste really, really good, you're kind of like, oh, that was, that was brutal. Can be a little bit brutal sometimes. All right, so I'm gonna continue to peel. I also, you know what, I gotta admit, like I don't love my peelers. So if anyone has good peelers that you can recommend, pop it down in the chat, or if you're watching this later, put it down in the comments. This is an OXO one, and maybe I just need to get a new one. Maybe the blade's getting, you know, bad, which could be, because I've had this for a while. Maybe that's it. Maybe you just need to get new peelers every now and again. What do you think? <laughs> yes, Mateo, definitely the worst part. The worst part's the cleaning up. It's necessary, but it is, it sucks. No, no bones about it. And DS, I love that you and your wife work together as well. That's, you know, one of the things I'm also excited about with the streams is you know, one of the things I always wanted to do, you know, because he, he knows I love cooking, but I also think there's something fun about cooking together. I don't know, like it just, I really, I just think that's cool. So that's why some of our streams, um, my favorite one that we did together was when we made the summer rolls because we were just really doing it, no rush, just kind of doing it together. And I just thought that was super cool. I don't know. I love that. But yeah, the dishes, not so fun. Sometimes I wished for those um, from a certain age, uh, Bewitched. I was one of my favorite shows when I was little. And one of the things, um, because I think that I think Bewitched was on UHF because we had so little channels. Oh my gosh, I'm showing my age here. You know, you had your main channels and then you had your UHF channels and you just hoped that the rabbit ears would would be able that you the antenna you put on top of the TV would like enable you to get that channel in. But I remember, whoopsie, runaway apple. I remember watching um, Bewitched and I loved it because Samantha, she would twitch her nose and things would get done. And I was like that, you know, I, I saw someone on Twitter ask like, if you could have any superpower, what would, what would it be? And I'm like, that's what I would want. I'd want to be able to twitch my nose and either I'd get dressed and showered and makeup and being a woman makeup because I do wear makeup and all that or snap my fingers and the whole place is tidied, snap my fingers and the whole kitchen is washed and ready to go. 
That would be awesome. I don't think that's one of the superpowers they ever show in Marvel, but that would be the superpower I'd love. I know it's technically magic, but what if? I want it to be a superpower. Yes, those were the days. <laughs> I remember, DS, I remember watching some movies, you know, like being thrilled that you'd see. Like I remember once being thrilled, and I'm pretty sure it was on, on um, UHF, being thrilled that, uh, oh, what's the movie called? Um, oh, it's a musical, and I'm forgetting it right now. Um, one of my favorite musicals. Uh, and Steven Spielberg just remade it. Um, ah. Okay, whatever, with Natalie Wood, and I'm forgetting it right now, but I remember that would be gold. You'd all of a sudden see something that usually wasn't on TV that was on TV in Europe, but you, you know, there was no DVR, so you had to watch it. You had to stop everything and, and watch it. Um, that was the best. I loved, I loved that. Actually, it's not the best, but if, like looking back at it now, it's, it's, it's a great memory, right? Because you had to stop everything. I remember um, my mom waking me up early to watch Princess Diana get married because, you know, the time difference. And at that point we had a little black and white TV. So we're all huddled around watching the wedding on this little black and white TV, but I was enthralled. I was a little obsessed with Princess Di, I must say. And I was totally devastated when she died, as I know half the world was. But, uh, but those are good memories, like those are good memories. And now we just have so many channels and we have all these different streaming channels. Like there's just, there is so much. Um, and with being so much, a lot of times I feel like Hubs and I say there's nothing, there's nothing to watch, right? Which is crazy. West Side Story, that was the movie. When West Side Story would be on, oh my gosh, my sister and I would be enthralled. And that was in black and white. I also remember um, the first time I ever saw, uh, what was the one with, oh, I'm, I'm terrible. I'm, you can see, this is, this is 50 for you, right? Someone tells me once you go through menopause, you'll get your brain back. I feel like I lost my brain once I had kids, so it would be really nice to have the brain back. All right. There we go. There were lots of movies that I saw for the first time. And of course they were edited and cut because they were made for TV, but it didn't, it didn't matter. It was just exciting to see them. All right. So our apples are peeled. And then the next thing we're gonna do, and so they're in this acidulated water because we don't want them to get, um, to get brown while they were waiting. And actually I don't need the mixer anymore, so I can move that. Let's get that big thing out of the way and then we'll slice these apples and you do want them to be thinly sliced because of the cook time because the cook time um once everything it goes in the oven it's like about 35 minutes so you want to make sure those apples will soften which is why you want them thinly sliced okay so i'm going to move this and I'm gonna put this back over here so you can see the slicing process. So exciting. Where'd my slicer go? Oh, there it is. Okay. So again, I'm gonna use this side here and let's hope it works. I, I honestly, I've never used the slicing side for anything. I just, I just tend to slice my own stuff. Um, yeah, we'll see. So first thing I gotta do is core these, of course. Let me get my a good knife. That guy back in. So for coring, I just like to cut it into a quarter and bring that middle part right up. That's how that's kind of how I like to do it. In fact, let me get a couple of these going so that they're ready to go. I'll get that skin off. see I'm so glad I got the music to work like even though so with YouTube um, since I don't have the money to pay royalties um, to popular music I YouTube has an audio library that I like to use and there are songs that I can listen to for free so I don't get 
any claims against me when I'm streaming, but I still get to have some decent music and you can kind of go through it and find what floats your boat. So I'm just gonna slice these. Super easy. Just don't wanna, even though this is not a mandolin, I still do not want to obviously hurt myself, but it's a lot safer because like if I put my fingers against these blades, they're not going to be, oh, the little seed there. They're not gonna be hurting me, which is good. And you know what I'm gonna do? Instead of getting so close, I'm just gonna save these chunks for us to snack on later. So, Hubs will like that. He will be happy. It was West Side Story, yes. It was West Side Story, one of my favorite musicals. I love West Side Story and I will say, I know this is not um, everyone's opinion, but I really enjoyed the remake, the Steven Spielberg re remake. I thought, I, I thought the actors and actresses they they chose for it were excellent, and I I I loved his take on it. I I think he um, he looked at it with his eye, which was very artistically. And um, I, I, I just love it. I love the songs. I love the love story, even though it's tragic. It's just such an iconic story. And of course, it starts from Romeo and Juliet, um, which I also was the one um, Shakespeare thing in school that I enjoyed reading because, you know, when you're a young girl, it's all about the love story, right? So um, yeah, I love West Side Story. And that is just... That musical, uh, the original version, holds up for sure. Definitely holds up. You know who might like these apple scraps too is, oh, whoa. okay. <laughs> so live from Philly, making a mistake. I just put some grated apple in there. Oops. See, this is what, this is learning a little bit about me. When I do two things at one time, like talking and cooking, yeah, that kind of stuff happens, so. But what are you gonna do, right? And it's all good. And it's apple, so it wasn't like I was grating potato into our apple pie. But yeah, we've got a little grating action going on there. I was wondering why it was going so fast. I'm like, wow, this is really going fast. So easy. Now I see, because I wasn't paying attention. Shocking. All right, so I'm just gonna put this in here. And this will enable me to kind of eyeball how much apple I'll need. Now the apple will obviously cook down, but I also know that I'm putting this, this is not a pie that's going in a round pie, pie plate. This is a pie, you might have noticed this, that is going in an oblong pan. So your standard, I think nine by 13 pan, that's where we're gonna be rolling the crust out into, and that's where it's gonna be cooking. So it's an unusual looking pie, um, this Hungarian apple pie, and yeah, that's, that's what's gonna happen. So let me get these cords so that we can, there we go. So I love a good apple pie. In fact, there's a place uh, where we used to live um, that made the best pies. I stopped making pies actually at that point because up until that point for Thanksgiving, I would almost always make an apple pie. Um, I think usually it was apple crumb pie because I love the crumb topping so much. But then once I met the pie lady um, in South Jersey, her pies, like you just can't compare. Her crust is amazing. And in fact, um, that was about maybe a few years into that was when my sister was realizing gluten was the culprit for a lot of how she was feeling. Um, she, she just had trouble processing gluten. She is not celiac. Um, but she truly, it would, it would give her terrible stomach aches and it was not a good thing. So um, she also makes gluten-free pies and they are phenomenal. Her crust, I can't believe, I mean, if you, if you tasted them side by side at the pie lady, you would obviously be able to tell which one was the regular crust, but there is, the, it, there's, it's only good, like the um, gluten-free crust it is delicious. So um, she's amazing. She makes phenomenal, phenomenal pies and other items. She makes great scones. She makes lots of good stuff. So now I'm slicing again, so that's good. 
Good and Plenty. I have I ever been to Good and Plenty at Lancaster? I feel like I have. We have not been in Lancaster for about oh dear, um, hmm, probably 15, 20 years. Now my husband has gone there sometimes uh, for work, but we have not been there as a couple for fun. Um, and I bet you we have because that sounds very familiar. Do they have good pies there? That's what I'm wondering. And you can find a lot of good stuff in Lancaster, um, homemade stuff. In fact, I will tell you, DS, one of my favorite things that I had in Lancaster that changed my popcorn world forever was their kettle corn. We bought this huge bag of homemade kettle corn. Like you saw the kettles that they were stirring it in and you smelled it, it smelled de delicious. And we bought this huge bag and then we were heading home. I think, um, I think actually my sister was watching the kids it's when they were small. And when we got home, it was gone. We could not stop eating it. It was so addictive and so delicious. Yes, family, yes, family style Amish food. Yes, I, I, I'm almost positive I've been there. But kettle corn, oh my goodness. And you know, I'm a sucker for when I see, you know, popcorn that we now buy in bags, which is, I will say, even though I fully admit that I buy popcorn in bags sometimes, like in the grocery store, it kills me though, because popcorn is so inexpensive to make on your own and it's so much better, you know, when you make it on your own. Now I'm already noticing some of my sliced apples are getting, are getting a little brown. Don't despair, you're not even gonna notice once they all cook, but I am glad that we at least, you know, here, we at least made sure the outsides weren't brown. That, that, that was helpful. But we are going to be getting this all together before we know it. And I'm probably going to put a piece, piece of plastic wrap over top or a plate just to help um, some of that air not get to it. It just is what it is, you know. I mean, it's going to taste good, but obviously, you know, you try to keep your fruit looking nice as well. But don't despair. I remember getting... Um, the biggest kick when we went out to Lancaster, we were, you know, in Amish country and, uh, you know, it was wonderful seeing all the, the farms and the buggies and all that. And then I also got the biggest kick and, you know, cause I know it's, cons uh, the Amish are often you know, quite conservative, which is totally fine. Um, but there's a little town out there called intercourse, which I'm sorry, you can't help but giggle when you're like, it's Amish country and it's called intercourse. Isn't that funny? But you know, that's the way the world is. A lot of irony. Or not. Okay. So yes, we're not far from Pennsylvania Dutch. Okay, so we're getting to the we're getting to the the end here with these apples, and then we can roll out the dough. I thought it was interesting. The dough is quite similar to um, my apricot, not my, my grandma's apricot um, uh, uh, what's it called? Crisscross. Her pastry. It was very similar. And what I love is you have to roll that out and put that in that this size pan. And so it's actually heartening to know that that's pretty easy to work with. And, you know, if something comes apart, you just pinch it together. So this will all be good. Okay, I've got all these little apple bits. I gotta have to take these out to the hubs after we get this in the oven. Enjoy. In fact, you know what? Let me take. Mmm. There, I love apples. Very tasty. And I will say, you know, because Mostly the apples that we get anymore, the Honeycrisp, is Jonathan, are definitely, they're not as crispy, I will say, as Honeycrisp. But I think for this pie, that will be perfect because it will, um, it will enable it to soften properly because you don't really want to have a big, hard chunk of apple in this, right? All right. So this is the last of our apples. I'm going to cover it, I think, with a plate just to help protect some of the air from making it brown. And that is good. Get our acidulated water. 
out of here. Okay, you can put these in here for hubs in case he wants them. Got that. Okay, we are in business. Time to roll it out. All right, let me dry my hands. Move this away. Oh, put here in case I have any questions. All right, so my apples are ready. I'm gonna cover it with a plate just to help reduce some of the oxidization that makes them brown. Yeah, that's not gonna work. Let me see, do I have anything better? Yeah. It's gonna be a little MacGyverish and try to fashion this to cover. Okay. Yeah, at least yeah, at least protects it a little bit. So all I did, you don't have to do this, but I just covered it with a little bit of a paper plate just to help keep some of the oxygen away because what we are gonna do next is roll out this dough. So first we're gonna roll out one of them. I'm gonna put a little bit of flour. And what, we're, what I'm aiming to do is to get this, get a couple apple pieces. I'm aiming to get this to be the shape of this pan. And we want it to come up the sides a little bit. They actually, um, my aunt writes in there, come up about halfway up the sides because you're going to be sealing this in. So let me move this around. Let me get my, oh, there it is. Let me get my, my grandma's rolling pin. I'm going to need to move this out of the way. And now let me make sure. Yep, looks like we can see everything. So I don't want too much flour. Let me get some of that one unless I need it. Okay, let's get to it. So, so what I do, and I do this with the apricot crisscross, is one of the things I like to do is kind of push, smoosh it out into the shape I'm shooting for, right? I'm shooting for an oblong shape. So that's where I'm going to go. And of course, you just want to make sure it doesn't stick. So you want to keep it moving, rotating it, because you're making sure that this isn't going to stick. There we go. And so you can see the edges look a little bit um, craggly, but that's okay because we're going to be sealing this. Get a little more on there. Oh, thank you, GS. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Appreciate you coming on. And anyone else who's enjoying it from afar, we appreciate we appreciate the love for sure. And I'm seeing my yeah. So having not made this in a while, one of my observations that I'm having right now is that this is going to be quite thin. So I'm just a little bit worried about like it ever so little, just because I know I've got to have it go up the sides and it's not really lengthening as much as I would like. So hopefully, there's always this part when you're baking that you're like, is this gonna work? Is it gonna work out? Because while perfection is never the um, what you're what you're shooting for, you do want it to just work. And it's a, I have a very I have a very what's the word I want to use a very uh, thin spot there that I want to patch up. So I'm going to put a little bit of water. I'm going to put some dough there. Remember, if you add water to any dough, 
it's like paste, not paste, it's like glue. It just, it helps it glue and attach better. I'll put this one right there. But again, perfection is not what we're shooting for. We just want pie. Pie, not perfection, right? All right, so I'm going to uh, give this a whirl. Okay, so then what I like to do is I like to fold it in half, and then I fold it one more time. See, that was a little bit came up there, got a little sticky. And let's see how we did. So we're going to put our pie pan. Let me see so you can see it well. I think that way it works. Yeah. There we go. And now I'm going to put it in and unroll. Yeah, we've got some patchwork to do, but that's okay. Yeah, all right. All right, that's good. Just got a little patchwork. I kind of feel like grandma's would have looked much better, would have had less patchwork, but that's okay because she also made this more often. I'm going to get a little thing for me to dab my finger in for the water so I'm not constantly going over to the sink. I get that right now. Move this out of the way. All right, so let me grab a little water bowl. And the dog is out. She is. She is napping hard right now. All right, so here's a little water bowl so that I can do this. Oh, and I want a sharp knife. Also. Um, let's use this. Okay, so I want this to go up about halfway up the sides, okay? So you see that's happening some of the spots, but other spots not so much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically trim so I have extra dough, and I'm just going to do a little bit of patchwork. That's all. So trimming some. Because then I have more dough to work with. There we go. All right. Get a little bit here. Okay. All right. I have an idea because I can visually see that this patchwork is not going to be quite enough. So I'm going to make an executive decision that maybe when I took my piece of dough that I took maybe the larger one and I know I'm not going to need quite as much dough for the top. So I'm going to actually put these little pieces here. I'm going to cut out where I put my knife. I just have my knife. Hmm. <laughs> ah! There's the knife! All right. There we go. Okay, so I'm just going to take a little bit of this dough off and roll it a tad. Let me put this here for a moment. Just going to roll it a tad. So I have more to work with in my patching. So you know what? Sometimes you just gotta make stuff happen, right? There we go. I'm gonna roll this piece back up so I can kind of utilize it. There we go. Okay. Get a little bit more flour. It's kind of like craft session. When you're making pastries and pies, have more flour there. Just gotta look at it that way. But there's always possibilities, right? We definitely need more. There we go. Okay. All right. So I've got them out, and now what I'm going to try to do is on these areas that I'm sh I've shown you that I just need a little more coming up the side because we're going to seal this. I just need to cut it then. Let me see here. Yes, apple pie, pumpkin pie, shoe, I've never had shoe fly pie. Pecan pie, love it all. An edible band-aid, exactly. DS, tell me about shoe fly, shoe fly pie. I don't think, I don't think I've had that. I think my mom has bought it and I, but I was younger and I probably was worried that there was, there were flies involved because you know when you're a kid, like that's where you go with this kind of stuff. Um, 
So I would love to know more about Shoe Fly Pie. About what's in it. Okay, so I'm just patching this up here, getting, as DS said so eloquently, some band-aids. So I'm just cutting some dough and gluing it with some water. Putting some in here. Go. Okay. Very popular. Yes, I thought I'd heard, seen it out there. Molasses as its base. Ah, I see. And I will have to say, don't hate me, but I am not a big molasses girl. I am just, for whatever reason, I think it's just a strong flavor for me. So I don't know that I would be a big shoe fly pie fan, unfortunately. Get that there. Yeah, there's a lot more work. So I will have to, I'm just gonna, I always will be honest with you guys, I'm a little disappointed on how I did with my pie here because it just, I just think what I would do next time is I would almost err on having a bigger, um, a bigger piece of dough for the bottom crust knowing that I need to go up the sides. I would definitely do that next time. You know, the other pie that I'm actually not a big fan of because of texture is pumpkin pie. And I love pumpkin. Like it is not the pumpkin flavor. I've used pumpkin for lots of different things. Love the pumpkin flavor, but I'm just not a big fan of the texture. So um, a while back I had posted, I saw um, one of the people I follow, James Walker, um, from Frisch's and he had posted their pumpkin pie and truth be told that is the only pumpkin pie I've ever had that I really like because its texture is a little bit different it's just a little bit firmer um, I think that's what it is which is why I like it more so just that's that's just you know I think a lot of things affect us in our tastes and texture sometimes can be one of those things. Okay, so my patchwork is going pretty well. I'm worried about my poor apples getting more brown, but what are you gonna do, right? At the end of the day, this is gonna taste awesome. And I think as bakers, that's what we have to remember is that some of the OCD in us that wants things to look perfect, we just gotta let that go, right? Okay, so this isn't perfect but i think it'll work so what i've done here is i just made it you can see that it goes up around all the sides a little bit because that's going to help keep in this yummy filling all right so um i'm going to actually i'm going to brush this off and pop this in the fridge to get cold again while i'm rolling out the top and then we'll fill it and we'll put the top on top for sure so we just brush off the bottom, all the flour from the board. What? Shelby, you woke up, girly. You woke up. Hey, girl. Did you have a good nap? Oh, she's going right back. You got a glimpse. Did you get the glimpse, DS? A little shell, a little shellster. Okay. So now I'm gonna, I'm going to, uh, flour my rolling pin for our last piece. Yes, it, I agree. And I, and I knew it's, I'm, I'm glad you jogged memory about the shoe fly pie. Cause I, I actually do remember as a child, literally thinking, cause we do thinking that there would be flies in there. And that was my instant reaction, but um, maybe it was to the smell them because I think, and it's funny cause I, I love brown and dark brown sugar and i know one of the hallmarks of both of those is that they have a little bit of that molasses flavor but it is it is subtle it isn't super strong um and i'm just not a molasses girl for sure you know in fact if i recall when i was making the bavarian um pretzels there was a, a hack because we didn't have the malt was the malt syrup of some sort and they said oh a good substitute would be molasses and we were talking about the fact that I used to carry molasses because I felt like you were supposed to never use it and when we had to downsize I mean when we moved to the city we did downsize because you can't really fit 
suburb stuff in the city, um, I got rid of it because I'm like, why do I have this? Like, I never use it. And I didn't use it because I didn't like it. But yeah, I'm sure that's definitely a hallmark to the shoe fly pie. And no disrespect to the plot pie. I just think, obviously, there are definitely things that, that we like and don't like based on our own tastes and experiences. So, all right, so we're rolling out this top piece to go on our pie. Thank you for all your patience. And I actually, you know what, I gotta tell you, when I'm streaming and I have some errors or mistakes or troubles, I'm actually, maybe it's strange, but I'm actually glad that it is on stream because I don't know, like, I don't know about y'all, but cooking isn't perfect. You know, it's, there's, there's stuff that happens. There's, and sometimes I think people get frustrated cooking because they, they judge themselves that it's, that it has to be somehow perfect or it didn't turn out like they intended. And I'm normal. I'm human. I, you know, I can feel that way sometimes, but it humbles you because you're, you're just trying, right? You're trying to make this recipe, um, just be patient, give yourself grace. And at the end, it's going to be delicious. So there we go. Okay. So one other, uh, reflection I will say is this dough reminds me an ingredients of the dough for, um, I need to go this way, for the dough with uh, apricot crisscross. But I do think that that dough is easier to work with. I don't know why, this is not a sticky dough. I almost feel like this dough, um, it's not sticking together as easily. It's, I mean, it's, I know it's gonna sound weird. Like it just, I feel like this dough, I'm just, I'm just doing a little patchwork now to help, hopefully make my job a little easier when, um, when I try to get these together. So again, you don't have to do this, but I kind of see an opportunity to do a little patching while I'm still molding my dough so that it will hopefully make the finish line a little bit easier. So I'm just wetting the little patches, I'm pushing them onto the dough, and then I'm going to continue to roll. And we're almost at the that point. And I need a little bit more flour. This. There we go. Okay. Get this up. Okay, got another little hole there. It's inter It's interesting how these little holes are forming. Okay. There we go. The little flower doesn't stick to the thing. Okay. Whoop. A stickage. There we go. Okay. Let's see. All right. Okay. I think we are ready. We are ready to put the top on. So what I'm going to do first is I am going to wrap this in fours. I'm going to wrap it in half and in half so that I can lay it nicely on top. I'm a little concerned I have some stickage from my pasting because when you paste and you add a little water, it can seep. So I'm just gonna use my, this is the best tool by the way, for any kind of um, baking uh, pastries, it is a dough scraper. So, and it's, it's actually can be used even when you're just chopping vegetables and you wanna get them up into the pan. So I'm just gonna use this, there we go, like so. I'm gonna brush off the extra uh, flour. I just want to make sure it's not sticking. I've done all this hard work. I'm not going to have it stick now, right? There we go. Okay, so my dough is off. I did not know that because I haven't. I've seen. I've seen probably four. Like a, um, I've never. I, I've seen. I think one full episode of Julia Child. I've never seen. I've seen lots of parts. 
And I love that she's very real in her shows, but I didn't know that she kept them. I love that. I think that's awesome. I think that's what sometimes can um, make people avoid cooking is because they're worried about that whole perfection part. And, and really, I mean, obviously some of us are more skilled than others, but nobody's perfect. So that's awesome. Go Julia. There's so much to love about Julia Child. Now I actually think I want to watch more of them just so I can see that and it'll, it'll hearten me. Okay, so I'm going to bring out my chilled dough. So this was our chilled dough that we made just a few moments ago. I'm, so now what we did before was we mixed two tablespoons of flour with one cup of sugar. We're going to be, um, I'm just going to be sprinkling some of that down below. I'm going to put half my apples on. I'm going to sprinkle some more, the other half the apples, and sprinkle some more on top. Okay? So I'm just going to take, I'm just sprinkling, sprinkling some goodness. I will have to say, it seems like a lot of sugar. I don't know that I'm going to be using it all. I don't know what Grandma would think about that, but I'm just worried. It just seems like, <laughs> it seems like a lot of sugar. I don't know. I think part of it, what's funny, is that we cook differently. Um, now, and I do, I have had these apples and they're, they're a nice sweetness. So, um, yeah, I'm actually going to mix them only because those bottom ones got brown. By the way, the paper plate on top did help the top ones stay, um, stay a better color. But, uh, so I'm just going to mix the brown ones throughout so there's not just like a brown section. Okay, so I'm going to put half of my apples down. I bought that. Yeah. That looks about right. About half my apples. I'm gonna spread them. Yeah. A little more. There we go. Spread those apples. I spread them over top of that sugar and flour mixture. Use my fingers. There we go. Oh, it smells so good. I'm so excited for this pie. See a little piece of the skin. I see a seed, getting that seed out. Okay, I'm gonna put some more sugar. Yeah, I don't think I'm using this up. <laughs> it's just gonna be an awful lot. Like I want it sweet, but okay, that looks good. And now we're gonna put the rest of the apples. There we go. Wouldn't be a street without some of those lovely sounds that I get to make. The noise. All right. Okay, we're doing spreading. Get all these tucked in. And of course, these are going to shrink and reduce some because they're going to cook. There we go. Looks good. And we'll do one more sprinkling. And then we're going to lay the other dough. And we're going to try to do some sealing. We are going to try, right? All right, so I'm going to sprinkle. Sprinkle. Okay. All right. I, that, I'm leaving the rest. So I used more than half. I just feel like any more is going to be overkill. The other thing I'm going to do is I want to take a little spatula, let me rinse my hands, and I want to get that dough a little bit off of the, um, the side of the pan. I don't know that this is necessary, but I feel like, um, here, one second. Right back. Yes, yep. But I feel like, um, I don't know, my gut, and you know, a lot of cooking is gut. I'm just going, to, I feel like I want that a little bit away from the edge so that I can get a better seal. Like I feel like if it's totally against the edge, it's gonna be harder for me to get the seal. So I'm just gonna loosen it a little bit. You can see what I'm doing. Again, don't know this is necessary. My grandma might laugh at me, but I just want to make sure I can get that good seal because when the juices go down, it's not, a, it's not terrible, but it's just going to create a lot of, 
you know, sticky brown burnt sugar and it might be hard to get the pieces out. All right, so now, oh, this is gonna be lovely. So now all we're doing is we are, let me make sure this looks good so you can see well. There we go, okay. So all we're doing is we're laying our dough on top. We're kind of like doing a judgment call on halfway. There we go. Do a little further, yep. And now I'm gonna open it. Okay. And then what we're going to try to do is I'm just gonna to try to seal. So again, I'm gonna get my my little knife that I've now not located. I can use my spatula, it's fine. Because it's not like it's a piece of meat or anything, so I can get that off. And I just wanna, I wanna somehow seal this. Uh, might be easier said than done, but we will give it a college try, right? So I'm going to, first of all, put this there. I'm gonna put quite a few here. Just wanna make sure that part gets sealed. Okay, it doesn't have to be perfect, but I just, I wanna to try to get that sealed in somewhat better. Okay, and I'm gonna use my spatula actually to help a little bit too. Piece there. So just doing a little bit of pinching. Again, don't know if this is the way to do it. I'm just trying to get it a little sealed. Okay. Oh, and I have some extras here, so I'm going to cut some of this off because I in case I need any more patchwork. There we go. All right. That off. All right, so I'm just kind of tucking, and then I'm gonna look for any holes and patch those up. So I've got a hole right here that I want a bigger piece. Oh, no, I just ruined that. There we go. That right there. Use my spatula. Spatula is really being quite helpful, I will have to say. Again, just trying to seal these apples up. I'm trying to not be perfect, because I know I can get wrapped up in that. Okay. So what I wished, I will tell you what my mind is thinking, what I wished I could have achieved when I did this was I wish that, um, I just wish it had gone up higher so that I could have gotten a better seal. I'm, I'm just, I'm not gonna lie. I just wish that it didn't, and that's okay, but I wish that could have happened. And so I'm just trying my best to, you know, not have it, um, just trying my best to not have all of every, everything leak out. So that's, that's what I'm trying to do right now. Let me just see. Um, any holes, so I'm just looking for any holes, and if I see one, a big one, I'm just trying to cover it up to protect the pie contents, the yummy contents. Okay, all right. Okay, I think I've gotta let, let go, let go of the control and just let it be. What will be will be, right? Okay, I'm gonna let it be, I'm gonna let it be. So the last thing that we are going to do, is we are going to, uh, first of all, we're gonna poke it with some toothpicks, uh, or a toothpick, not some, you don't need to give some. Just need to get one, and just to let some of that steam release when the apples cook. So I'm just gonna prick it throughout. That's what the recipe said, so I'm gonna prick it just so that the steam can release. I don't know, that looks good. Just pricked it a few times. And then we are going to be um, mixing up those egg whites and we're gonna brush it. We're gonna beat them a little bit and we're gonna brush the top with the egg whites. 
and then we are going to sprinkle it with nuts. Okay, let me get my little brush. And of course, this will make the crust be shiny and brown and beautiful. So this is called an egg wash. And sometimes an egg wash involves a full egg, but I believe my guess is I don't think back then um, they wanted anything to go to waste. So you'd use the yolks in the dough. So your egg wash was just going to be the whites because then you could use up those whites that you had. Now in her recipe, she does just say one egg white. So you could just do that and use the other egg white for an omelet or you know whatever that you wanna do. But I just mixed up both of them. And then the last thing um, that we are gonna add before we pop it in are some nuts. Now she doesn't specify the nuts, but I know my grandma used a lot of walnuts. So I basically just, I'll show you, I um, crushed up some walnuts and we're just gonna sprinkle them on top. And the one thing I just wanted to make sure, um, yes, she does say sprinkle with a little sugar. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use some sanding sugar. Now I could just use regular sugar, but I actually have some of that, that um, the pre really pretty sugar. So I'm gonna do that. If you don't want nuts on this, or if you, there are nut allergies, you can absolutely leave this step off. And you could also add whatever nuts you like. You could just put sugar on top. I love the sanding sugar because they're just, they're bigger crystals and it just really makes an impact, not only visually, but also um, you feel it, like it just has a great texture. So I'm just sprinkling it with a little bit because we, we need more sugar, right? So here, here we go. You can see that right there. We've got our nuts and our sugar sprinkled on top and it's going to go in a 400 degree oven for about 30, 35 minutes, or I'm doing it um, convection, 375 since it's convection. And I'm gonna check it at 20 minutes. It's not gonna be done in 20 minutes, but I just wanna check it and make sure and see how it's going. All right, so um, now, because we have the time um, and we've not done this before, I'm actually gonna turn off this one until the pie is ready. So let me, switch my camera scene there we go we'll put that back on when the pie comes out for a close-up look let me move this back but since i was going to have this time to fill i decided that i would actually clean up not only is that good because it'll help fill the time but we'll get stuff cleaned up and i can tell you a little bit more about what we're doing today so if you are not interested totally understand and you can come back in about i don't know 20, 25 minutes and see how we're doing. But I'm gonna just tidy up right now while I can. So Hubs and I are helping out um, my older son and his wife because they are both in a wedding this weekend. And actually they're in the wedding tomorrow, but today is the rehearsal dinner and everything. And they have two dogs and their pups, the first one, was a pandemic pup. And uh, so during the pandemic in 2020, sure enough, um, they got a dog and her name is Hannah and she is so sweet. Um, they went the rescue route just the way, you know, Hubs and I did. We both, both of our dogs we've had, Shelby's our, our old girl now, but the first dog we had was a rescue pup. I actually, at that point I was teaching and I volunteered, this was back in Ohio, um, I taught and I volunteered at a rescue called um, Animal Rescue Fund um, down in Southern Ohio. And after school, I'd go there and I would work with the dogs because one of the things that they needed with volunteers was to work with the dogs that they got um, just to socialize them. You know, have them get them used to a leash, get them used to, uh, to people and um, all that good stuff. So I would do that. And honestly, you know, I know I was technically volunteering. It was wonderful. Like I, it wasn't, it, it filled me. I mean, I love, I love uh, furry friends. So it filled me as much as it filled those dogs. So when we got married, um, our first place that we lived in did not allow pets. 
so we couldn't have a dog. But then we moved to a, another place, um, a little further outside of the city. We were in Cincinnati at that point, and that location um, did allow dogs. So Hubs learned right away that um, wife doesn't delay on certain things. Like I kind of get to it, and so and I had already been volunteering there. So I was already eyeing some of the dogs, and it was a whole different experience though once I was gonna be getting one for us to call our own. And I found this dog, um, this little beagle mix, and she was so sweet. She was, we think she was about a year old when we adopted her, and she was definitely, she was shyer. She wouldn't say she was shy, like she was friendly, but she, um, you know, she was a rescue. They found her, I think, with her brother on the side of the road, and we were just in a small little place. And so I, I still, to this day, um, I feel really sad that I didn't get the brother too, but also, by the way, it was a no-kill shelter. Um, so I knew that not getting the brother, it wasn't putting him in any harm. Um, one of the things I loved about that shelter is that they are a no-kill shelter. So um, those dogs, sometimes might be there for life, but they're always going to have loving, you know, people around them. And in any event, um, we got our first dog and I named her Sadie. And I don't know how I picked that name, but it just seemed, she just seemed like a Sadie. And she was delightful. And that's the first dog the kids knew. And then after Sadie passed away, years later, she was about 14 or 15. After she passed away, we went to a shelter because we were over here on the East Coast, back in the East Coast at that point, and we went to a shelter in Coatesville called La Mancha, which is a wonderful shelter um, for pets. They have cats and dogs, and I don't know if they have any other kinds of animals, but they have cats and dogs, and we found um, Shelby. It was funny. We weren't actually going to be getting a puppy puppy we were looking to get like a one or two year old dog because number one a lot of times those dogs have trouble finding homes because everyone wants the puppies and so we you know we had looked we went through all of their their furry friends and i don't know i just gotta say nothing felt right like it just for whatever reason you know we were seeing these lovely pups and nothing felt like it was the one and then the woman said to us, oh, you know, we just had these puppies come in from a high kill shelter down um, in the south. I forget where in the south it was from, maybe North Carolina. And do you want to take a look? And so we should, we said, sure. Although in the back of my head, I got to admit, I was like, no, but we really don't want like a puppy puppy. Those will, those will get homes really easily. And again, this wasn't a kill shelter either, but still, I just knew how it was with, with pets, right? And anyways, we found Shelby and, you know, the litter was there that she had come with. And most of her, her litter, most of her brothers and sisters were going crazy. Shelby is a lab mix and, you know, so there's lots of energy that it can be attached. She has lots of other things in her, but can be attached when you have lab in you. Um, and they were going crazy. And what I loved was actually Shelby's energy because she was sitting there wagging her tail, but she wasn't like going nuts. And I actually loved that because I thought that was one thing you have to be aware of, right? Is the energy level of the dog and if that's going to fit with your family. So we took her out um, of where they were keeping them. And she, oh my gosh, Michelle, she was wonderful. And she totally won all of our hearts. And then my eldest um, named her and, uh, and it stuck because one of my uh, favorite older movies is Steel Magnolias, and Shelby is the southern girl in Steel Magnolias. So Shelby is our southern girl, and the name just totally fits her. So anyway, that is the Shelby story. Oh, I love that DS. I never strive for perfection. I always strive for excellence. Well said, well said. Yes, Shelby. So it's so funny you said that, DS, because honestly, Shelby hears so little. Like she just, the poor girl, like her hearing has gone quite a lot. And, and, and you know, a lot of people, when we tell them that, will go, oh, you know, because obviously if our hearing went, we'd be super concerned about that. But for a dog, 
Because think about that. Dogs are always, they have a protective sense about themselves and they're always listening, you know, for things that might be of concern and, and all that. And, and while that's just how they are and that's their life, they, um, it does create a little bit of stress and anxiety for them. So she just doesn't really hear much. So it's just like she, her life is just kind of super chill these days. But, um, but I think, you know what I think, T.S.? I think she could tell I was talking about it. She could tell that my heart was beating a little bit stronger because I was talking about my Shelby. So, anywho, alrighty. So now washing this great tool I was telling you about, the, uh, the dough scraper, the pastry scraper. This here. Now, so this is the hardest board to clean because, you know, you can't obviously put it in the sink. You don't want to. It's wood. So you have to be careful about wood. So what I usually do is I take a wet rag or paper towel and I get all the extra dough off. You can see I already used the dough scraper on it. So I get any of the extra dough off. Okay, and then I'll take a little bit of lemon. Take a little bit of lemon. Let's see. I just want a little bit of lemon on there to kind of get, can help get up some of the gel. And it's almost, to me, it's like a natural freshener, cleaner. And then I'm gonna rinse that off. And that way, it also helped get up some of that dough that hadn't come up yet. Okay, and I'll rinse this and give it one more wipe and then I'll dry it with the paper towel and then I just let it dry. Um, you know, I don't do anything else on there besides dough, whether it's pastry dough, bread dough, cookie dough, pasta dough, it's all dough. So like I'm never doing even vegetables or meats or like it's just those products or, you know, ingredients. And it has worked well. And I leave it out, I don't put it away, I leave it out to completely dry before I put it away. I'm going to set this aside here. I realize I never finished the story though about the kids. So with the kids um, going to their wedding, they needed someone to watch their pups. And uh, so we are going over there to help with the pups. But you might be wondering, well, wait, what's Shelby going to do? Or why isn't Shelby going? Well, Shelby had a period of time when she was very young um, for quite a few years that she, for the most part, loved meeting dogs, loved getting new friends, and, and acquired some really good dog friends. We had dog friends, we were st when we first got here, we were in the suburbs. We had dog, she had dog friends that were in the neighborhood. You know, you've probably heard if you follow me on Twitter, she's got her favorite cousin dog, Ralph. Um, Ralph is about the same age as Shelby. They've known each other for years and love each other. But then, I can't remember how long ago it was, and she just decided, I don't need any more friends. Have you ever felt that way? I mean, I've not felt that way. But she literally was like, the friend door, closed and shut, no more friends. And so from that day forward, she just is not interested. And so that's, this is what it looks like when we're out walking her. So if we were out walking her, um, and so, because you know, most dogs are like, friend, 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 friend. When we're out walking her, you have one like young dog that's so excited to see this new dog on a leash. And I just, I'm very aware. <laughs> and if I notice the owner is not really aware of their dog, I'll just say, she's not really dog friendly. And, or I'll say she's kind of, she's feeling witchy today. Like I just try to like give them that little warning sign because the thing with Shelby is she's not going to start a fight. Um, she just is not interested, right? So for her, what really annoys her is when you have some young or older pup that decides to go all up in her business without asking and without getting permission, right? We need permission for that kind of stuff. So then she will turn around, sneer if they don't get the message, growl, 
And if they don't get the message, she might nip at them. So, and of course, you know what happens then, the person, you know, they're like, oh, and I'm thinking, you didn't read the dog messages. This dog was not interested. It was not wagging its tail towards your dog. Like, I just think as dog owners, we need to be just very aware of that not everyone's dog is like our own and we just need to be respectful of that. Let me just take a peek and see how it's doing. Oh my gosh, when I tell you how good it smells in here right now, it's ridiculous, totally ridiculous. Okay, so I'm gonna start getting some of this washed. Um, so we are watching the grand pups and they're both rescues. Hannah was their first and um, Daisy was their second. Um, Daisy is like a, she's like a lab mix. Hannah is, what would you say Hannah was? She's like a, like a, what would that be? Like almost like a, not a mini Doberman, but mix. But she's got, she, she has very, she's just beautiful. She's, she's a black, mostly black dog with wonderful colors. Um, very short hair dog, more like what a, what a Doberman's hair is, the very like silky short hair, um, but she's smaller and she's quick and she is, they're both, they both have wonderful personalities. Um, Daisy is just everyone's friend and love and Hannah is super loyal. Like, right, so she, once she invite, once she takes you into her, her love heart, she will not forget you. So we are watching this weekend. So since Shelby cannot be left alone, our youngest, Matt, that you've seen on our streams, he's gonna be coming over and taking care of his little, his little pup, his little sis. So yeah, so that is what we're doing this weekend. So Diaz, that's a good question. So what am I serving with the pie or do you have it by itself? So what my grandma used to do, um, is she would, you would cut this pie into two by two squares um, and put it out for people to have. Like, I don't really remember, to be honest, I don't remember my grandma serving with pie. I mean, serving it with ice cream. Certainly, pie with ice cream is phenomenal. Today, we are gonna just be, when we have our piece that's probably gonna be too hot, um, we are just gonna have it with a little bit of whipped cream because we're not going to be able to allow it to properly cool, but we want to make sure and show you that little taste um, when it comes out of the oven. But that, but honestly, I remember the pie just being, because um, I, I think my mom made it, she would just serve it right out of the pan. I don't remember, for some reason, I don't remember if my grandma served it out of the pan. I remember it being cut, but I think for some reason, I feel like it was out of the pan, like she, she put it out onto something for people to get more easily. I just don't really recall. But um, my mom, one of the things that's nice about it is it's in that pan and you can just put foil over top of that pan unless you have one of those covers that come with it sometimes. And that can just be, you know, where you store it. So this is not a pie that you take out, you know, even though it's in the oblong pan, you just leave it in like you would a regular pie in a round pan. So that's a really good question. But yes, it would be delightful with ice cream, especially warmed up. Okay. Pups is going to be so excited I'm washing these dishes. Okay. So we have, so you should know what I'm going to do. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to change my mind. Let's see here. Let me put this out of the way. And this goes here. One second, friends. So one of the things I wanted to talk to you about was what was coming up. So let me move my let me put my dishes here. Okay, Brett, one second. So coming up this week, um, I mentioned that once a month I'm going to be doing some air fry with uh, wings, and so I'm making traditional buffalo style wings in my air fryer because I've heard that the air fryer is the place to do your wings. You don't have the extra fat and it absolutely crisps them up. So I will let you know if that is a truth or if they've been spreading bad rumors because I only like a crispy wing. I do not like wings that aren't crispy. That is to, the texture to me is one of the most important parts of a wing, um, a good wing in my opinion. So that is what I'm seeking. And there's someone, his YouTube channel is called Pro Home Cooks. 
He is a wonderful, um, wonderful chef. I love watching his videos. He has great stuff out there. And he has already gone through all of the different air fryer techniques and flushed them out and gave you his opinion about them. So I'm gonna be using his advice uh, based upon what he has uh, found out himself and use that as the basis for my buffalo wings next week. But the in coming months, I'm gonna be doing the continued wings once a month on the Wednesdays, but I'm gonna do them a couple different ways because we like wings all sorts of ways. So I'm gonna look for some you know, Asian style wings, um, honestly, just lots of different styles. I'm, I, I love a sweet and spicy wing, like I love and sticky. Oh, to me that is, that is so good. But, um, so there's lots of ways to go about it. So be on the lookout for wings each month on a Wednesday. So this Wednesday is our first Wings Wednesday. However, if you were on our stream, our cocktail stream that we had this week, you will know, or you might remember, that we can't have it on Wednesday. So even though my first wing's Wednesday, it's not on Wednesday, because uh, it's just not gonna work out. We have something that got um, rescheduled uh, that Hobbs and I are going to that we need to go on Wednesday. So we will not be able to do that. So I have not, I will fully tell you, I've not decided if it's gonna be on Thursday or Tuesday yet, but I will be making that decision pretty soon. Like I'll make it by the end of the day tomorrow and, um, and I will share, share that news. So, um, it, oh, I will tell you this. If it's gonna be Tuesday, I will share that news tomorrow. So I don't like to promo the streams too far in advance because I feel like people then forget. So if it's going to be Thursday, then you won't hear about it for a couple days. So you'll know if you didn't hear anything tomorrow that it's not going to be for a little while. So we'll see. And then next weekend is, oh my goodness, I forgot what next weekend is. Let me go take a peek. Let me take a peek. I think it's, I think it's something really cool. In fact, I'm almost positive. I think it's when I make pasta with the little one. Let me take a quick peek. Let me see, friends. Let's see here. Okay. Oh, and there's this. There's that. Let me see. It is. Yes! So next weekend, I am so excited. I is I'm going to do a pasta stream, but it's not any pasta stream, it's homemade pasta stream. So I am getting out my old pasta, um, what do you call it? Uh, pasta press or what, you know, the pasta machine I have. It's not a plugged in machine, it is by hand. Um, I asked for it after the first time I made pasta with a neighbor and I love it, but I certainly have not made any homemade, I've made homemade uh, gnocchi, but I've not made home, homemade pasta since the kids were little because I think things got a little overwhelming then with two really uh, busy boys and I just didn't feel like I had time to make homemade pasta anymore. But the little one loves pasta. I think it's his favorite food group. And of course by the little one, you know it's, he's the adult that just, just, just moved out um, this past summer. And he, um, he is gonna, he wanted to learn too. So we're gonna be making pasta together and his favorite pasta sauce is carbonara. So we are gonna be making homemade pasta and then we're gonna be making a carbonara um, sauce to, to, uh, to kind of toss with that homemade pasta. So I'm super excited. I love cooking with my son. Um, you know, it's just, to me, it's just a good memory building time. Oh yeah, so this is my dishwashing tool. It's called, and it's not just mine because obviously Hub uses a lot too, it's our lazy tool. I'm fully admitting it's our lazy tool, but it is just, I love it. You know, I, I mean, we have, you know, once they made the sink so much bigger, you know, how like, I don't know how many years ago, like 15 years ago, all of a sudden sinks were big and they were really low. It's just really hard filling up a huge sink with water to wash your dishes because like it's just so much water so anyways um i love this tool 
and then you just have to replace this sponge top. And what's hard to find is we also came to, I forget who makes this, but this is like a non-stick um, coating here. So the tools that you'll usually see is it's more, um, it's more fibrous and we don't like that as much, but that one, things don't stick to it and it helps things get off. So I'm gonna check our pie because our, our time went off. So let's see how it's doing. It smells amazing. So our pie looks good. I definitely can tell it's not ready yet. Um, it's, I feel like I know from my memory it needs to be more browned. It's browning, but I, I just, it's too light. So I need it to brown some more. So I'm gonna put it in for five more minutes. Whoops, that's not what I want. Um, let me check it then. I think, I, think a good, I think after five minutes it's gonna be just fine. So yeah, so this one is called Dots. Um, that are on the coating on there and it's great because like if you use this to clean a scrambled egg pan it cleans it and it doesn't um the eggs won't stay st stuck on there whereas the the one that's like more rough and fibrous everything sticks in there i don't like that at all okay so it'll be a busy weekend and then in the city um on sunday is uh what's it like old city fest or something so anyway so we city has some things going on this weekend and i think we're going to try to check that out um and maybe get to a place and have a little lunch we are going to actually have dinner out tonight out in um, south jersey because we used to live there and we're going to go to one of our favorite places which by the way used to be in the city um the farm and the fishermen so the farm and the fishermen is a delicious is a great restaurant and it used to be in the city and it has since moved to the suburbs and it is doing wonderfully out there so we miss it being that you know it's not really convenient for us when we're in the city but it'll be a little more convenient when we're out um, taking care of the pups this weekend or tonight so we are going to go grab a bite to eat there so if I remember I will take pictures as you know if you follow me on Philly Philly Live Twitter and last night we ate at a place that I've talked about before and shared pictures before it's a newer uh, BYO Mediterranean restaurant um, in the city and it is a delightful place and we ate there for the second time and it was delicious they have the best pork chop i've ever had which i will have to tell you for all the places that we go to and love i'm as surprised as you that i'm talking about a pork chop but it is that good it is absolutely phenomenal and so every time we go there we always have to get it so we split it and we tried their chicken which was also outstanding um their roast chicken it's a roast calf chicken was delicious and it was on a mushroom risotto oh my goodness it was delicious very, very good. So tonight, Farming the Fisherman, tomorrow we'll grab a sandwich somewhere during Old City Fest, hopefully, find a spot. And this week, wings. So what kind of wings do you like? Or what kind of wings would you like to see on future air fry wing streams? Because I would love to know. In fact, I think I will do a little poll on Twitter, which is why it is good to follow me on Twitter in case I'm asking such things because I'd like to be able to, um, I like to be able to, you know, do what my viewers want to, want to watch. All right, so I'm going to get out the, let me see, whipped cream, because that's all we're using today. Again, ice cream would be better, but we don't have any ice cream here. I'm going to get our plates for Hubs and I, and Plate for the picture. The music has been perfect today. I'm so glad we got the music to work. And I'm gonna have to see if Hubs is ready to come join because the pie should be ready any minute. Did I hear Hubs say something? Did you say the smell is killing you? Yes. I'm going to turn it one more time for the last few minutes. There's one more minute left. I feel like we're in a countdown. 
So it is bubbling, it is browning, it looks phenomenal. The smell is killing me. It's going to be like lava. It will be like lava. We have to be super careful how we do this. We have to approach it. So what we'll do is we'll cut out a piece and then we'll show you that piping hot piece. And then I think my, my idea, and again, I'm just explaining this to y'all because I don't want you to, this is good on its own. So DS, I appreciate you asking like how it's usually served, but my favorite memory of it is having it plain. Like it is that good. So yummy. I'm so excited to have some. But for heat purposes, we, I think, should use the whipped cream to help cool it off a bit. So I think the whipped cream is going to just become cream upon touching the hot pie. But this is fun. Like, this is what, this is the best part. The best part is, is tasting, right? So it'll, it'll be all good. Ooh. Oh, I know what I want to get. I want to get, I have a great, um, I have a great spatula to use. And I don't know where I got this spatula. Turn that off. I don't know where I got this spatula. This, I feel like it might have been a Pampered Chef spatula, but this spatula is great because it is just, it's super sturdy. You can see you're not moving this thing. Um, and it's its not sharp like it'll cut you doing this, but the way it's chiseled, in fact, let me turn this on so you can see. The way it's chiseled really helps cut into um, lasagna. Let me show you. See how it's chiseled there? right there at the edge. It really helps cut into a pie, lasagna, any of those things, but it's just super sturdy and getting things out, which is one of the things I love. So I'm gonna move this a second for later. And I'm gonna get a knife though to help cut. All right, and I think it's time to get it out. I think it's time for Hubs to come on over. Ready to come on over? Yeah. Right there. I can tell he's excited. He sounds super excited. Would you be more excited? I think you might be more excited. I've got it in two. He is, yes, but he is sitting on his tush right now. So I know you all have better places to be, but you know, I can't I can't cut the pie and get it out until the love of my life comes over to check it out. I mean, if I was, you know, if, if he was making me a big old apple pie, I'd be like, oh. <laughs> so how are the fills going to do today, by the way? I hope well. I hope well, too. Okay. Ta-da! Hello. All right, so let me get it out. Look at this, baby. Look at that. Look at that. Oh my God, it smells good. You see that? Oh honey, it's so hot, it's so hot. Okay, look at that. All right. Oh, it's boiling. Well, that's, the, that's the, um, the syrup from the apple juice and the sugar. That's what's going to um, create second degree burns on our tongue. I was gonna say, it. singe our tongues. Yep, right? it's gonna singe our tongues. All right, so. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to... Okay. It smells really good. So she would usually do it two by two. So that's usually the size that she would cut. So I'm just going to do... Oh my goodness. I just want a small piece, by the way. I totally understand that. And I would have guessed you would have said that. Although I think everyone watching would like a big piece. Wouldn't you all like a big piece as opposed to a small piece? Looks fantastic. It smells amazing. So this is not what we usually oh recommend you doing, goodness. by the way. We There's usually like syrup and or well, whatever. That's because I didn't seal the crust. No, no, I mean just. I a did little. my best. It looks. I think he just dissed me. Did he diss me? Yeah. How was that? Oh. <laughs> All right. So, anyways, what I was going to say is, don't usually do this. Usually, let your. It, I mean, you can eat it warm, but to eat it piping hot is. I feel like I need disclaimer so that I don't get sued. <laughs> Oh, I'm going to eat my little one. Okay, so that's not going to work. I'm going to try my little one. So I've also <laughs> showed you my little spatula. It's like spatula, McDonald's coffee. You my know? little spatula, which when you have a stubborn first piece. It is. It's like McDonald's coffee. You know how that they got sued okay, because that did it was not, so hot. That was not a pretty piece. You get the non-pretty piece. Uh, I don't care. You get a prettier piece. Oh, 
for all of the complaining, you don't get the pretty piece, babe. But here's some apples, though, for you. Here's some apples. Thank you. All right, now this one should come out a little better. I was gonna give him the pretty piece. Let me tell you a bit of a, of a little bit of a... I don't need the pretty piece. <gasps> oh, there you go, there you go. Whoop, I don't want that apple stay. I got it. What? There you go. See? Oh, I forgot that was there. You see that, friends? There's a little nut there, I'll take that, thank you. Mm, okay, so the reason I'm delaying is because I'm trying to delay a little bit because to let some of the heat escape out. I just want to show you on the inside why I delay just a minute longer so we don't get second degree burns on our. So this is what it looks like inside. So you can get a, you can kind of see, see what how it looks. Wait, wait, there we go. See, so your apples have all um, cooked and come together, and then you have this layer of crust on the top and on the bottom. Am I allowed to? You want to do your own? Sure. And you can see the sparkle of the sanding sugar. I think that's a so first So I'm time. actually going to put some on the side too because I'm trying to help cool it down. That's a good idea. All right, I'm a little worried. Not about the taste. I'm a little worried about burning my, burning myself. I think that's the first time I've ever had whipped cream and not squirted some in my mouth. I know. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. I'm growing You're up. You're growing up. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Oh man, that, that is really. Oh. This makes me think of my grandma so much. It's good. This is so good. This isn't this isn't gourmet fancy. It's just feel good food. Um, but what I like is I love the crust. It's such a tender crust. The sour cream just gives it a little different flavor. It's not, it's a flaky crust, but not a flaky crust like a, a traditional pie crust is. It right. just, it's just, it's light actually. Great, this is, great flavor on the crust though. And this is what I think, like, because I'm going to have some without this, the um, whipped cream, is it's just light. Like it's, you know, like when you have a, a piece of pie, even though it's, oh, oh, oh that's the girl. She apparently just go outside, hey. which hey. is what she's been doing lately during the streams. Um, but you know when you have a piece of pie, it's just a lot. Like it is just, it is a commitment, right? And it's delicious, but it's a commitment. These pieces are just light. They're, they're like, you could have one of these every day for a snack and not gain weight. All right, I'm gonna take the dog out. Oh, oh that was a hot one. It is so good. You've got to try this. It is delicious. It is delicious. And what, how lovely would this be for your Thanksgiving? Mmm. Mmm. I think grandma would have been pleased. I think she would have laughed during the part where I was, you know, putting together all the holes on the dough, but she would have been pleased. Mmm. Oh, it's so good. Oh, thank you, DS. It tastes so delicious. It smells so good. And I so appreciate you hanging out with us. <clears throat> it got caught in my throat. And yes. Come on, Phils, we need another win for the next step. And let's just do it tonight so that we're not all like totally anxious the next game. So go Phils, thank you DS, thank you BB for stopping in. For anyone else that's watching um, from your couch, I appreciate your support. I appreciate you popping in to see our stream here and do try this. This is, it won't disappoint you. This is just, it's just like a homemade goodness. It is not, um, I think that's what's striking me is it's such a tasty little pie, but it isn't this big ta-da thing of, um, you know, I, I don't know, when you have pie, like sometimes you're like, oh, I shouldn't have had that pie because it was really rich. This is just light and delicious, but, but you have that yummy apple. I actually think the Jonathans did a great job because they cook, they cook down more. Um, if you want more texture in your pie, do use a Honeycrisp or a granny smith because it'll have its texture more but for this it actually seems perfect if i must say and totally delicious so from philly philly thank you for for joining thank you i hope you have a wonderful weekend and please let me know down below in the comments what you think and what you'd like for future streams and i hope to see you wednesday for air fry for air fry wing wednesday which won't be wednesday i keep saying that it'll be tuesday or thursday i'll let you know thank you so much until we eat again farewell <laughs>